sorry, hold on just a second while I get some footage of myself walking into the airport. Hopefully this will help to establish the notion that I'm a seasoned travel pro jetting off to yet another exotic destination. Ah, who am I kidding? I'm taking a 45 minute easy jet flight over to Gatwick and maybe this kind of footage is totally overkill. Hey everyone, Scott here, founder and author of Sandspotter.com, and well, you already know that I'm in Amsterdam ready to hop over to London Gatwick. It's going to be my first experience with EasyJet, so yeah, I'm prepared for the worst, but hoping for the best. The first thing you'll notice about flying EasyJet out of Amsterdam is that they don't actually post the gate info until just moments before they begin the boarding process. Hilarity ensues when they finally do announce the gate, and all of a sudden there are 150 people running full speed towards one tiny doorway. I didn't want to risk losing a leg, so I waited a bit. The second interesting thing about these EasyJet flights out of Amsterdam is that there's no seating in the gate area. The process involves scanning your boarding pass to enter the room, and then you queue up and obediently wait until it's time to board. Seems a bit crude at first, but it actually works pretty well. Okay, well, here we go. Getting hit square in the face with bitter cold temperatures and driving rain during the walk out to the plane was the perfect way to augment a low-cost flight experience, in my opinion. But seriously though, I didn't mind at all, especially since I was seated in the rear section of the aircraft. This allowed me the unique experience of boarding from the rear stairs, which I've done maybe twice in my entire life? However, it's not very often I get to board a plane this way, so it ended up being a slightly stressful experience. All I could think about was my camera malfunctioning. Or worse, tripping and falling off the edge of the stairs and ending up in the hospital with two broken legs and a fear of airplane stairs for the rest of my life. Why does my brain automatically go to such dark places during the most epic moments? Well, color me impressed. This was not what I was expecting. At all. I guess I was expecting a tattered and torn interior that looked as if it had seen its fair share of pooping babies and raging frat boys on their way to Ibiza. This was anything but that. I can't get over how nice this interior is. It's easily one of the nicest looking economy cabins I've seen in a while, which isn't something I was expecting to say about EasyJet. However, legroom and underseat storage is just so-so, especially if you're like me and you overpack your bag to the point where you can actually hear fabric ripping as you try and close it. I don't know, but how much money in fuel cost do you think they could save by not stuffing these seat back pockets with all these magazines that nobody will read? It makes for good b-roll though, so I don't mind. As we roll out for departure, I can't help but to think that up until this point in my life, I've been thinking about EasyJet all wrong. So far this airline has lived up to its name in every regard, and it's been one of my easiest flight experiences ever. Hungry? They weren't doing a full service on this short 45 minute flight over to London, but it was neat to have a look at the menu and play a little game of what if. More specifically, what if I was rich and I bought everything on the menu? Yes, I actually took the time to add up what it would cost to do that, and the total is 190 euro, assuming that I bought the largest size of everything. How's that for a thorough EasyJet review?
20 minutes to go and I'm still fighting with the lack of underseat storage on this aircraft. Seems as if I'm going to have to pack less underwear next time I fly EasyJet. Oy vey. Regular viewers of my videos will know that I tend to get motion sickness if I can't see the horizon during a bumpy approach. It was thick as pea soup out there and I was having difficulty holding it together as we made our way into Gatwick. I'm happy to report that the horizon was as sharp as attack once we dropped below the clouds and I managed to hold it together all the way in. All in all, this was probably one of my most surprising flight experiences of 2019 so far. The check-in and boarding process back in Amsterdam was effortless and the stylish and clean interior of this aircraft was unexpectedly welcoming. So what's with all the EasyJet hate that I've been reading on the internet all these years? This was a really great experience and I really mean it when I say that I can't wait for my next EasyJet flight. And yes, that's a pretty big compliment coming from me because I most certainly can't say that about other low-cost airlines such as Allegiant or Spirit. Oh, and before I wrap this video up, I just want to let everyone know ahead of time that there will not be a video next week. Sorry about that. The good news is it's because I'll be traveling again, flying on three new-to-me airlines in two different cities I've never been to before. It's going to be really fun, and I cannot wait to show you the footage from that. Thanks so much for watching, especially to those of you who made it through all the way to the end. I'll be back again in two weeks with the final transatlantic leg of this European adventure, which ended up being another surprisingly good flight. See you soon, and I'll catch you in the next one.